All right, hello and welcome to the Eventure Family channel. If it is your first time here, please do subscribe. We've got an awesome adventure here. We are on the island of São Miguel in the uh, Portuguese uh, Azores or Azores. And we are going to be here for about 10 days exploring tons of cool things around this island from volcanic lakes to waterfalls to beaches, all kinds of awesome stuff. And because we are the Eventure family, we have got an electric vehicle here. It is a Nissan Leaf, which I've never had the pleasure of driving before and I am actually weirdly excited about. Should be a ton of fun. We managed to fit all of our bags in. I'll take you on a quick tour and then we're gonna go head off. All right, so first off, we rented this from Illa Verde, and they were super easy to work with. Line moved very fast on the inside. It's a very small airport, you can see here. Uh, and we had no issues getting in whatsoever. And the vehicle itself is awesome. So uh, they've got a lot of great options here. If you're looking for a good rental car company to deal with here, uh, you can see they've got a great selection. So Illa Verde for the win. So this is our Nissan Leaf. It's got about 40,000 kilometers on the odometer so far. You can see it's not the biggest vehicle, but uh, it's not too small either. And we've got room for all of these buffoons. All right, so we've got a little backup camera on here. Yeah. And you can see we've got three suitcases, some book bags, uh, and more in here. There's actually two different charging cables, so this one, uh, I'll show this stuff later, but this is the, uh, like the, the type 2 connector that you would plug into like street charging and probably faster charging. And then over here we've got a, uh, I think it was a level 1 AC charger. So the Leaf actually will do AC and DC charging, which should be good. And we've got a little charge card that we can use as well. All right, they're crazy from our flight, so we're gonna get going, I think, here. All right, so here we are, driving the Nissan Leaf, a car I am bizarrely excited to test out. Oh, and we have manual seat adjustments here. <laughs> this is a ICE vehicle with a battery. I mean, basically, that's how like everything was when they were first making EVs. Yeah, but this is my second time in a Leaf. Actually, <laughs> I mean, we have backup cameras. They are it's gonna pick it up. not the greatest, yeah. but they do work. Yeah. And there's a 360 degree like overhead view, which yep. we barely have in the Tesla. I guess technically, uh, the latest update we finally got gives us like the, I call it the ultrasound view because it looks like basically the 3D ultrasound that we would get with all the kids. Uh, and that sort of gives you it, but it's not with like real cameras. So uh, anyway, this has got that. So not bad. Huge steering wheel on here. Very, very sporty. Uh, <laughs> incredibly greasy one, but uh, that's because it's a rental car. Kind of gross. But yeah, I might need to do that. Um, I, I can't believe the range on here though. 240 kilometers is nothing to sneeze at. That's, isn't that only like, that's less than 120 miles. Uh, uh, no, six, six to 10, so. All right, I, I mean, honestly, it drives pretty well, let's see. All okay. right, we are not in eco mode. There's no sport mode to my knowledge here. Uh, regen's actually not bad. If I totally get off, then it the comes to a slow down. <laughs> no speed at all. Pump, pump, pump. Daddy, you see the lights on the... Yeah, so the, the pedal's interesting. Uh, all right, now there's nobody behind me. All right, so I'm going to like totally stop, but... All right, all the way down, and then there's like a kick down switch to give you extra speed. There we go. That works. It is not uh, not what you're like kind of used to in an, any other EV from a acceleration standpoint, or at least at least the EVs like, you know, they were kind of typically driving, but... It's all right. I mean, it does definitely feel like a, a gas car, basically, just even with the way the torque is applied and sort of the like pedal mapping and acceleration. You do get like a little bit of motor wine, though. It's nice. All right, let's take a look at the scenery here because it is pretty cool.
at the EV9. Looks huge here. All right, we're here two minutes, and I've already turn missed left. the turn. Nothing, turn left. Oh man, I'm glad we didn't get anything bigger. <laughs> Look at their surfboards. Do you think they take the surfboards in the smart car? Oh my God, smart uh, is like the best-selling car. Yeah. I guess you don't need anything bigger here. <laughs> it's not here, you know. Go on a big road trip. I wonder, like, the, the, uh, how long do you think that EV9 is going to sit there? It's a little too much money. Yeah. Back. With EV9. So I'm kind of surprised that there are not, uh, well, I guess for, for Europe, uh, I'm so used to seeing so many EVs and still a lot of combustion cars here, which I guess makes sense. Probably the normal like time that you would keep a car here is pretty high. And so people are not replacing them uh, all that often. And I think some of the infrastructure isn't necessarily here. But still some awesome options that we've done. Of course, we are gonna check them out and do some car spotting while we're here as well. Plus over the course of the 10 days that we're here, we're gonna be driving around a whole bunch. Uh, this leaf is definitely gonna get some good usage and we are gonna check out the charging infrastructure across the island as well. Hello! All right, we're heading up the bell tower of the town hall in Ponta Delgada. 106 steps up to the top. These stairs are interesting and sketchy. But they, what? I guess they, they must have been here a long time. <laughs> the spaces between them are a little bit sketch. All right, so we are at, I think only the midway point of the tower, but we have the bells here and have a nice view. And then there's a turret for us to walk up next, which looks quite interesting, but let's go check it out. We're here, right? Fascinating, there's a BYD showroom here in the Azores. I haven't seen a single BYD vehicle here. And it looks like this is maybe not open yet. I'm gonna go check it out in a second though. That'd be cool to see some of those here. So I don't know what to do with BYD is they're not open. Uh, I think they maybe don't have permission to sell yet or they haven't like brought it here, but not open yet, preparing to open by the end of the year. But then over right next to it here, there's the uh, Illa Verde group which looks like it's the same thing as our rental car company. And then they've got this old uh, Ford Model T on display here. Uh, <laughs> fascinating. And here's BYD. They've got ads for the uh, SEAL coming in the end of the year. 100% EVs. The SEAL's pretty interesting. It is uh, very affordable, very cool looking, like sort of, you know, sports car inspired sedan, sports sedan. Um, that is, took up the exact price, but it is kind of shockingly affordable. So I would love to see one in person. I've never seen a BYD vehicle uh, other than the taxi we saw in Montreal, but there's none even around here. So this is my favorite car uh, in Europe, a little Citroen Ami full EV, and it is just so cool. Uh, obviously it wouldn't sell very many of them in the US and it wouldn't make sense to like start the brand there. But um, how cool is that? I would love to import one of those. We're here at the fort now and this is an awesome museum. The kids are free and adults are only three euros. And that allows you to go out onto the ramparts and everything and then they've got just a huge display of all kinds of military stuff here. So this was an important strategic fort, uh, especially because the Azores are you know, sort of off in the middle of the Atlantic. Um, it was incredibly important during World War One and Two, And they actually had like two, uh, I don't know if I'd call them battles, but engagements with submarines here during World War One. This is an old uh, diesel fuel generator. Now you can just put this in batteries. I wonder how much this could actually produce. It was made in England, and this is from World War Two. All right, here is our sweet, sweet ride. Here's a parking garage, which is pretty nice. Just tough to get in here. I'm glad we don't have the Rivian, although I think it would probably just about fit, because the ceilings in here I think are higher than the one that we did in Montreal. 
it'd be very hard to fit down that ramp. <laughs> and I think there's even, are these things outlets? These are outlets. Interesting. Hmm. We'll see. All right, we're gonna go pick up some groceries. This is charming to drive on. <laughs> this is incredibly stressful. I'm so clenched. <laughs> Plus, people here are driving Arlo, like, no sleep, like like 50 no miles an hour. Like no they sleep, just we're fly up on behind you. Like this car, this car, not there a second ago. Okay. There's a BYD seal. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, I love that one. It looks so cool. All right, first full day here. We are about to go head off to explore the island a little bit here in our leaf and check out Sete Sedayans, uh, which is the two tw uh, twin lakes that are in the middle of a volcanic caldera. And we're all loaded up here. And one interesting thing I noted was that as you can tell early on in the design of EVs here, we have this transmission tunnel uh, hump uh, in the back there, which I don't really know why that's there. I mean, obviously the engine is in the front. I don't know if this is front or the engine, the, the motor, I guess, is in the front. Uh, and so I wonder if there's a transmission that goes to the rear wheels here, whereas like most EVs now just have the motors directly on the axles themselves. So it could be that, or this could just be like an artifact of Nissan, like reusing some design from some of their other gas vehicles. But we've got CarPlay going, uh, no wireless CarPlay in here. We are at 92%, we have 221 kilometers, which would be more than enough to get us around today. I think we'll get back here probably still with like 40-50%, uh, maybe even more. And off we go. Not just enough power to get up here. So what I was trying to tell you before is that the government here did a partnership with Nissan and their electric provider 
to do a pilot program of a vehicle to grid thing. So like they're trying to do, you know, as much solar and, and wind here as possible. And like during the day they're getting a ton of it, but then at night obviously they can't produce and you know demand is, is high. So there's a fleet of twelve Nissan vehicles and chargers somewhere. I think it's at the headquarters of the electric company, which is of course right up the street here. Um, and the chargers there, so like the, the cars are used during the day by the city. There's 12, uh, 10 Leafs and two Nissan vans, like delivery kind of vans. Um, so they're used during the day. Then at night they plug into the chargers there and the excess energy left in the batteries feeds back into the grid. So they basically act as like a, like a power wall or battery to the, uh, back to the town during it. So um, and they said it's been greatly successful. It's helping offset energy usage and um, balance out the demand or the, the supply. Another thing on this car I don't understand is there's drive and then there's B mode, which is usually like for regenerative braking, but then there's E pedal. And I have E pedal on and it's giving re me regenerative braking. And when I let off, oh no, it, it's not actually regenerating at all. Okay, here we, let's try B mode with E pedal. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, that's more regen and it's actually regen. That, that, why do you need to like say I do want regen? It's very strange. Arlo, but I told you to stop. The Leaf is kind of a perfect vehicle for here, size-wise and even power-wise. I would not want anything bigger than this. And actually, it'd be nice to have a little more power than this, but it's ample. We're not having a problem getting up these mountainous roads. So we're heading toward the Miradoro do Pico do Carvalho, which is a viewpoint, the first viewpoint here. <laughs> And this is the thing that we did exactly what they said not to do, which is to come here when there's cloud cover, because you go up high enough elevation wise that you're basically in a different zone here and the view could be not as nice. But we're gonna come back this way anyway later in the week on a sunny day. So, uh, so that we'll have even better views. But we just wanted to scope it out today and at least get in some of the viewpoints. And there's also webcams all around the island that you can check to see how things are looking before you make the drive. And this is only 20 minutes from the town, so you can basically check right as you're leaving and have a pretty good idea of what it's gonna be like. And they also call this the island of four seasons in a day. And at least from us being here so far, it seems like the mornings are kind of the, the nicest. It's not like the night is bad, but it seems like the clouds kind of roll in a little bit in the early afternoon. All right, so this is Lagoa do Canario, which I think is Canary Lake, but everybody now calls it Snapchat Lake because the shape of the lake is exactly the same as the ghost that is the logo of Snapchat. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll have to see if it lives up to that. We are gonna go do a little hike to a viewpoint over the lake, I believe, and then around the lake. I don't like that. Hey. We'll see how it goes. They haven't really figured out that you don't just yell <laughs> to each other when you're using walkie-talkies, but they figured out how to use them, so so easy to use, even a four-year-old can do it. A four-year-old that doesn't follow direction. Yeah. All right, so this is the Mirador de Boca de Inferno, which is the mouth of the volcano, I think. And uh, it is awesome here. Just absolutely stunning views. And we have these dual lakes here, this green one and then the big blue one. So all of this was formed by volcanic eruptions and then collapse of the volcano basically, which formed different craters here and separated these parts of the lake. So this green one here is green from uh, algae that grows there and then the blue one doesn't have it and has a bit more minerals, which is why it is so beautiful and blue. And then you can see the Atlantic out there. So, a little bit of crowds here, but not too hard to get around people. And absolutely worth the hike. It is gorgeous, even on a bit of an overcast day like this. All right, we are here basically at the peak of the, I don't even know what the name of this mountain is, but it's part of the one of the volcanic calderas here. And we have the descent to the Atlantic behind us that way. And here's the volcanic caldera. 
little lake and then the Atlantic off that way too. Incredible. And the hiking is just incredibly amazing. Otherworldly. All right, awesome hike and we are all exhausted now. Their legs were jelly. So there was some carrying involved, but absolutely beautiful scenery, gorgeous hike. And we're gonna head back down the mountain now, back into town and get some Let's dinner soon. What, what, uh, batter, what such battery situation? Oh yeah. So we're 75, 75%. Let's see if we actually like recover more than we use on the way back down. All right, we made it back down with 77%. We made it all the way up to 78 from regen on the way down. We lost only 1% coming back into town. So that was really cool. We're actually getting pretty good efficiency in here. Uh, I haven't done calculations yet, but maybe I'll be able to find it in here somewhere. We have discovered a Volkswagen E-Up. Little EV, no, that little, that's cozy. I like it. And you know it's electric because the front of it is blue. Remember when every EV needed to be blue in the front? I mean, our rental leaf does too. And a lot of vehicles still do, but that's how you know. Our Volvo EX30 just went by us up there. Ah. All right, so we came downtown now and uh, have dinner and they have this concert going on here, the military band uh, out in the square here. It is for the centennial of the death of Teofilo Braga, who was from Ponta Delgada and was a author and playwright and rose to become the president of Portugal and then died in 1924. So I guess they're celebrating that now, but it's been a great concert and everybody's been having a blast. But it's getting late now, so we're gonna head out of here and back to our apartment for bed and more adventures tomorrow. So another car that I really don't get why we don't have in the United States, ID5. And I was just saying, look at how big the ID4 looks here because it looks massive compared to all of the little cars here. But this is like the perfect size car for the US and yet we don't get it. I guess it must be too close to the ID4. But it's just maybe a little bit bigger, especially the trunk. And come on Volkswagen, you gotta bring more to us Americans. Definitely a oops, Volvo EX30. That's the second one we've seen. Let me put the same one because it's white also. Looks awesome. Try to get one in full as soon as we can find one here. I've never heard of a Chateaune before. Look, it's adorable. Alright, we are here in the botanical garden in Punta Delgada and Got these incredible trees in here. Stuff from all around the world, including the Southern Hemisphere, Asia, Micronesia. We've seen some stuff from like New Zealand and Australia too. And then all kinds of wildlife around here too. Or maybe not wildlife, but uh, chickens, roosters, baby ones, little duckies. And there were even Azorian bats in the cave. And you could sort of see them running around. They were little, little guys like this big. And you hear them like chittering. And very cool. We are loving it here. Yeah, but we the weather still have is so more. perfect. We still have more to see. All right, well, after a day exploring the Get gardens here and spending a bunch of time at the pool, we are now going to go head to Mosteros Beach and maybe just spend a little time there in the late afternoon now. Sitting out in the sun, maybe go in the water a little bit. And then we're going to have dinner on the beach and enjoy the sunset there. At least is the plan. Let's see. 
it should be a nice, fairly low key, relaxing evening. And we're heading out here in the leaf. We've got 77% still. No phantom drain at all uh, to speak of in here. Hey, you're just mouth flipping. Sweet. All right. We've got, let's see, we're going to go to. We're going to do the quietest whisper that you can actually do. Stare, stare. Can you, uh, can you get my hat? Be quiet. We're staring at speech, I think. Yeah. Can you get my hat? All right, 44 Head minutes. South on Ladera yeah, Dame de Deus toward Rua du Peru. 34 kilometers. Exactly so we should get there. Let's see how well this ac uh, predicts things, the accuracy with it. Yay. So we've got 185 now, minus 34. 150. One. Should get it this there. All right, well, while we're driving down these switchbacks heading toward the ocean here, which is just stunningly gorgeous, we're going to talk a little bit about the Leafs driving dynamics. Oh, and we're regenerating a ton of uh, electricity and, and range here. Oh my gosh. I can't even like think to talk. It's so beautiful. Holy cow. Just how beautiful it is, Arlo. So we're gonna use up a bunch going back and we'll have to decide. We did actually finally see our first like first char uh, fast charger here at a little gas station. It seems like the only ones on the island are at Galp gas stations. But uh, this has definitely exposed the driving dynamics of the Leaf a bit here. And uh, they are, I mean, look, it's not meant to be, yeah, a, a sports car, yeah. I mean, the steering is, uh, I mean, it, I call it aspirational. You kind of point the, the steering wheel like the general direction you want to go and the car uh, sort of goes there. And when you, and like when you push the accelerator pedal, there's sort of like, like the mapping of it to me is just a bit weird. There's very like fine grained control for the first, almost half of it I'd say. And then like you go past that and it's just, like you're basically just on full power then. And then, then there's like a kick down switch, but it feels kind of the same. So I don't know if I maybe just haven't found the right mode to get like a little bit more top end power, but it all just kind of feels the same. But I mean, it's fine. Like for around here, especially it's all these little cars. It's not like they have a ton of power either. And uh, for us, this has been just absolutely fine. And I'm definitely enjoying it. This is just, it's fun having this here. I'm glad we have this little Evie. 
So this is the beach and it is amazing. There are these like tidal pools here that you go and swim in and the water basically gets like replenished from the ocean whenever the waves splash up high enough. And it's a little chilly, but it wasn't too bad. You're like swimming in there and there's crabs and fish all around you. It was awesome. And uh, I think we're gonna hang out here a little bit more and then head back here to grab a bite at this little like restaurant here, a little, um, call it beach bar while we catch the sunset here all right we are off now from the beach and mosteros made a great dinner at sunset steve we saw crabs we swam with fish guys look at the sun all the way down there had a beautiful sunset we just see a guy up there awesome Yeah. It doesn't get any better. And we, and I and now we're, oh, we were the last people. Oh, no. Awesome spot. If you can, stop at Sunset Steve. <laughs> no, that's family. Oh. Okay, well, we lost, well, we're family too. But it was stellar. That's a yeah. All right, and now we have to drive back to Ponta do Gala. 47 minutes. Daddy, Not take so long to go on this island. So we're at 64% now, 160 kilometers. And we're driving back 35. Yeah, all right, we are back. So 35 kilometers and we used exactly 34. So we're doing great compared to the rating in here. So 126, 49%. And I think we're gonna try to charge on this little household charger up there. We can do that tonight. When, after we get them to bed, you can come down and do your- video. Hello. All right, so I'm gonna try to check our consumption if I can. So we've got, okay, there we go. Energy usage. Uh, Oh, that's kind of cool. It tells you how many kilowatts you're using while you're driving. So this goes up to 160 and shows you what stuff is consuming. That's cool. We gotta try that one. All right, driving range. Oh, it shows you how far on the island we can drive. That's pretty cool. So we can make it most of the way around the island, but not all the way, I guess. Hmm. Charging stations. And <laughs> there are none. All right, and EV settings. Hmm. Okay, I thought maybe we'd be able to see our consumption somewhere. Doesn't look like it. So there's no way to see how many miles per kilowatt hour you're getting from what I can tell here. I guess I, they figured that was something you didn't need when this first came out. I would like to know though. I mean, we could calculate it ourselves, I guess. So if we've used 50%, uh, well, the problem is I don't know how many kilowatt hours the battery is. I'll look it up. So we have used 51% and driven about 120 kilometers, 125, something like that. All right, well, we'll do that math. First, we're gonna get charging though. So first off, I need to figure out how we're gonna open up the port up there. So there's all of these buttons over here. I think this means like open up the port. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe we have to power on first. Okay, charging time. Charge now. Oh, there we go, I just heard it go, okay. And then we have these lights up here. So is this telling us how long it'll take to charge? So we need to charge for five hours and seven minutes. Okay, so now 
Okay. With that, so then what do we have here? That's all right. So we <laughs> have these two. One is Chattano, this one, and then this is like the type two here in here. So let's see if we can figure out a cable that's gonna work here. All right, that looks like our yeah, this is like a holstery one and another one. So I think that's our type two. And then, yeah, this one is a type one cable. So this is just gonna be outlet and into the front there. Let's see, what do we, what can we figure out on here? So our Nissan, Okay, output is 220 to 240 volts at 10 amps. So that's what, 2.2 2 to 2.4 kilowatts? Yikes, okay. Well, this is gonna be a nice low charge. So let's get this in up here. have one here so we've got that okay so that's our like Europe type 2 thing so it'd be the equivalent of the J1772 adapter in the US all right we've got beeping some lights up there I think it tells us it's charging does this give us any information at all about okay well we have a little light showing that we're charging charge plug is connected okay and no information at all huh <laughs> this is so bizarre. Just, just absolutely no information at all. So we have no idea how fast we're charging. We don't even know that we really are actively charging. I guess this tells us because it's not giving us any range stuff. All right, so at least the car is off. So hopefully that'll charge. I guess we'll figure out. So we have lights going there. So that's doing something. This is, okay, ready in power. All right, I think we're going. I guess we'll find out tomorrow. There's no app or anything for this, so. Man, this is going back in time to the early days of charging for sure. But I think we've got this going. I guess we'll find out in the morning. All right. All right, we're back down here for the morning. About to go head out to Furnas, which is like the hot springs and geyser area. And no, and let's see if we actually charged it all. Yeah. Does it tell us? <laughs> There's still no indication. Right, we'll have to get unplug in and check, I guess. All right, moment of truth. Let's see. What do you think? We were at 49% or something yesterday? Yeah, she got second. Yeah. What do you think? Hamilton was on 55. the podium. 55, you think that little? I, I mean, I think it's either 49, meaning yeah. nothing happened, or... Max went, he like came down first. 80? Uh-huh. And then it was Norris, and then it was Hamilton. Hamilton got on the... Hamilton. 100%! Which one is Hamilton? So I did some actual research on this car last night, and we have a 40 kilowatt hour battery in here. Which is why the range is as little as it is, but also why it charges pretty fast. Why you All right, that's pretty cool. It? Nice to be able to like level one charge yes, <laughs> overnight and have a full battery. Uh, Can you imagine like if we plug the Rivian in? I mean, remember, remember like in Stone we did that? Charge it overnight, I think we got four or five percent. Nice, all right, well we're off to Furnas. <laughs> Build your dreams, BYD. Which, I don't know which one that one is. That's, that's the bigger one. Seal, maybe? No, Seal's the like sports car kind of sedan. That must be the you know, Orca Dolphin. So the reason I'm excited about BYDs is that it's a Chinese brand. I'm not excited that it's a Chinese brand, but I just think it's fascinating because China is absolutely leading the way with EVs right now in terms of pricing, features, functionality, range, charging performance especially. They're like light years ahead. Um, but it's also because of extremely controversial practices with both human rights and production and how much um, the government has been subsidizing them. So there was just a study that said that uh, the government is effectively 
channeled. Oh, there's a charger there. Um, has effectively channeled in. I think it was something like 250 or 260 billion dollars uh, into the EV industry there, um, which is of course why there's so much development and uh, everything with it. But um, you know, the end result of it is hard to argue with. They have some awesome, compelling vehicles, and. Um, there are now not only are the United States trying to prevent them from coming into the market and just flooding and uh, taking over and destroying the competition because they're so affordable and yet nice, but uh, and there are 100% tariffs that are now going to be in the U.S. for it. Uh, but the EU is doing similar things with tariffs now to try to keep them out as much as possible. Uh, but it's a little bit late here because they have already been in. And then it's not sure like how much it's even going to totally matter anyway because they're going to find some way in otherwise they'll either do production in like mexico uh, which are already starting to build plants in or they'll just like come and build factories in the u.s if, if they're allowed to um and it's just it's so hard to like actually completely prevent stuff especially with how globalized everything is it's like geely already which is the yes, big group that owns Vol uh, uh, volvo and polestar you know he's got not only factories, but uh, obviously production there. And um, there are, are ways for these other ones like BYD, um, Zeker, uh, what's another one? I, I'm concentrating on driving, so I can't really think, but um, yeah, they are probably eventually coming. So I would like to learn as much as possible about them now and uh, just kind of explore them and understand them better because I think at some point it is likely we will have them as well. We are at the top of the Miradoro da Senora da Paz. Uh, the, well, this is the viewpoint, but this is the Church of the Lady of Peace. And you've got this like up these sort of terraced stairs here, and then the town of uh, Vilcampo de Franco down there. And then off in the distance there in the water is the volcanic island, or I guess it'd be like a seamount that is off the coast here and there's like a little sort of lagoon in the middle and this is where we'll be coming back to do our whale watching from beautiful view here the clouds keep rolling in and out and we kind of lose the view and then it comes back suns out it's awesome it's like they say here in the azores if you don't like the weather just wait five minutes <laughs>
All right, we're in Furnas now and at the Calderas, which are the geysers. And they are absolutely gone. Looks like these guys are testing stuff about it. That one out there is boiling and rubbling. Wow. This is actually sort of part of a, I said it was an active volcano, right? A dormant volcano, but it, I guess even dormant it still produces geothermal heat. Daddy, is that actually basically a hot spring? Hey, All right, we are going on a big hike. We're here at the lake now, and there are more geysers here. We're going to circumnavigate the lake here, which should be... I think it's a little less than four miles all the way around, but we are going to add on a one to a uh, waterfall also which will add like another one, 1 1.5, something like that. So we'll do about five miles. And everyone's got energy now. Let's we'll see how they do along the way. In a second. So all of these little holes are the spots that they put the pots in to cook the cozida stew, which is like a pork and potatoes and some vegetables and stuff. Stew that they cook with the heat from the hot springs here. So it definitely smells sulfury, but it's not as bad as you would think. It's not like overwhelming even on top of it here. All right, so after driving around all day again, we are down to 31%, so 
time to plug back in for the night and get charging. All right, so I beg pardon on this. Apparently the indicator is there. I couldn't find a way to set a charging limit, but I guess we're just fine charging to 100%. So I don't know what chemistry this battery is other than the fact that it's 40 kilowatt hours. Maybe it's LFP, which is why it's okay to charge to 100% all the time, but I'm not sure. Um, and apparently there is an app that you can use that will show you charging if you own the car, but since it's a rental, we don't have that. So it'd be nice to have like some indication on the inside that you're charging or how fast you're charging other than just this like blinking light that it is charging. And so apparently when the third one goes solid, it means it is fully charged. All right, morning again. Ouch. You look and familiar. I sure do. And we should be all charged up. And oh, ready to head out here. We are gonna hit the uh, hot springs today. The hot pools. You look familiar. And I guess we're charged up. I think that's what that icon means. No, no. Let's check in a second. Dad, all right, 48. all charged up, and Arlo's door is open. Is can, it... I, can I be? Okay. Hello. Hello. Is Hello. it because he opened it after I closed it? Yeah. Uh huh. Shut lock on here. Can't get it lock. Are those your seatbelts on? No, it's not, no, not yet. Oh, no, you're going to run okay. into a car. Okay, yeah. great. Off we go. We are heading to the uh, Donya. But... Yeah, and for 24 laps. Not alright. I'm going to be bats. stuck in this one. You're going to be stuck. All right, so this is the Bats uh, Dona Boca de uh, Bexa, something like that. I don't really do Portuguese, but uh, yeah, I don't really want to film here because it's not the lights, but we are going to hop in the hot springs. There's five different pools. They all have slightly different temperatures and it is beautiful. And it'd be relaxing if it weren't for these little creatures running around with us.
All right, so I did finally figure out that you can get some efficiency numbers on here. Actually, I guess it'd be consumption numbers. So 14.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Uh, so I'll have to do some math and figure out what that is in miles per kilowatt hour. So that is 4.28 miles to the kilowatt hour, which is excellent. It's better than we get in the Tesla and a lot better than we get in our Rivian. Usually in the Rivian we get like two, maybe 2.25 if we're really lucky on a long trip. And on the Tesla, uh, three or 3.5 at most. It's a good efficiency, which is why we are doing pretty good range wise, despite the small battery here. The battery here is basically like half the size of the Tesla and it's actually a third of the size of the Rivian. All right, good morning again. We are charged up overnight and forgot to hit the button. But kind of nice having like this size and just charging up to full on a 110 outlet every single night. Easy peasy. All right, and today we are going to be heading off to uh, Lago de Fogo for a hike. We're going to walk around the waterfall. I think it's Salto Cabrito. And then we're going to head to Goriana Tea Pl uh, Plantation, which is uh, this island is the only place in Europe that they produce tea, apparently. So, and the plantations themselves are like gorgeous. There's gardens there. So we'll do a little walk there as well, as long as everyone's got energy, which they do so far, thanks to all of the breakfast food that they inhaled. And weather's looking pretty nice today. So let's head out. The dealership over there is Cupra and they have a Kia EV9, which looks huge here. I haven't seen anything else nearly as big as that. There are almost no SUVs, even like small crossover ones here. Although I said that there's one right in front of us. Um, but no, I have not seen a single three row SUV anywhere. And then Cupra is a cool brand. It is a performance oriented, like sporty version uh, under Volkswagen Group, I believe. Which there are rumors that it'll eventually be coming to the US. But nothing concrete yet. Nothing cooperates yet, as as they say. during the summer, maybe all the time, hopefully we can help. It seemed like there's some short-term parking at the lake itself, but they were pretty much funneling everybody to the parking lot at the bottom and just taking the shuttle off. So there are two lines. We are on the red line, which goes from the south up to the lake. It stops for five minutes at the viewpoint up all the way at the very peak, and then drives down to the lake, breaking it off and go do your stuff. And then there's also a green line. We're on the red line. Oh, yeah. A red line that stops at the same viewpoint but also at the lake. And you can switch that, and that goes up into the northern part to Caldera Bella. Look at the people biking up. Oh, yeah, there's some geysers over there. Yeah. So we're going to go do about a three and a half mile ish walk around part of the shore of the lake. Then we'll probably hop back on the oh, other nice. line, go up to the north, and nice. see if we can get to the uh, Salto Cabrino waterfall. All right, here we go, Lagoa de Fogo. Worth it, right? It's incredible volcanic lake. We're gonna go hike around it, and I'm sure there's gonna be no complaining from the kids at all. So definitely a challenging trail. It's gonna be even harder going straight back up, but. You can see we're getting close to the shore now, and you can barely see up there where the people are, the very top. 
Uh, definitely several hundred feet of elevation very quickly. And then we're gonna go walk around the shore a little bit. These fish are just everywhere in here. Going nuts. I'm guessing getting like bugs off of the leaves in here. And they just kind of like sit there waiting. And then one comes and smash. Alright, I think a carp. And people are paragliding across here now. How cool is that? That'd be awesome. They just went off from like the peak over there where the tower is. And they're somehow over there. I don't know if it's a powered one or if they're just um, hang gliding. Let's see when we get closer. All right, well, they made it. We're still working. And there goes the paraglider. The boy said they're on a jet ski. All right, fun time traveling around the national park here. And, or national park? Natural park. Natural, natural park. park. And, um, I like the little shuttle buses. It was nice to nice way to kind of explore and have somebody else drive for us, although we were all falling asleep on the bus back. So it's a good thing we're back in the car here where all of them will probably be asleep, but at least I'll be awake. So we're gonna head over to Goriana Tea Plantation now and probably explore the gardens a little bit, get some tea, and then try to get back at least for a little time at the pool because we'll have time for the we have pool. not we had it enough. To to oh yeah, we want to get to dinner today. early. Okay, well, let's see. Should be interesting and you're arriving. All right, I've got to rant a little bit about this because this power button thing makes absolutely no sense. And I thought that I just killed the car, but it is okay. Where was that? Um, why does an EV need a power button? Because first of all, uh, so just now getting into it, car was on, like all of the uh, power and stuff was going. The, the navigation was on, the drive screen was on, everything. It wouldn't let me shift out of neutral though. And I didn't realize that we weren't in it because we were going downhill and the car was moving. And then I was like, why won't it drive at all? Um, okay, now it's telling me the lane detection thing has a system fault. Okay, whatever. Um, but like, and so I was all freaked out and then stopped the car, turned it back on again and it was fine. But like, wh why is that necessary? And then it's also been a huge pain remembering to turn the car off all the time. Thankfully, like it tells, like it won't let lock the car if it is on. But when you just kilometers. put the car into park and then walk away, why doesn't it just shut up? Horses. Or at least like when you try to lock it, why doesn't it just shut the car off and, and do it at that point? I just, I, I, I get like when this first came out, why you would have those things. But this is like the, it's been, been a decade of this car and multiple generations of it. Why do they never change that? Didn't they kill this off though? Uh, this is now end of life, yes. They're not making any more of these. They, they are still, a, you could still buy one today though. So like this is still technically an available car. Anyway, not a fan of that, come on. Let's just, like, this is the opportunity with EVs to make things easier and better. We don't need to just like stick to things for comfort and familiarity. Silly. Okay, well it's beautiful now and the car's mostly working, I guess. Tea factory. And there goes the tea. Actually, that looks like hay. Maybe that's tea. Maybe or milk. <laughs> well, let's go find out how they actually make it because I don't know anything about it. So they bring the tea leaves in here. They go in this conveyor belt. Go up into this machine, which I believe roasts them. Yeah. Dries them out, and then they come through here and they kind of get pulverized. They start out like this and end up as little grinding 
and stuff, uh, ground bits like that. So after stuff gets uh, through there, it comes over, after it gets steamed, it comes up through here, goes into these things, and these rotate around and grind it up, and then I guess you get the ground down bits down here in these wheelbarrows. You bring them over into the, that thing over there, there's like a big sifter, and that separates the tea grinds from the other stuff that you don't want to drink. It's a I never really thought about any of this before, but it's a very different process between making green tea and black tea, apparently. So, here are the different steps for each, and that's why there's different machinery for each as well. And then they also use slightly different parts of the tea leaf itself for each one. Huh. Very cool. Makes it more enjoyable when you like understand how they make it. I liked it. I'm not really a tea drinker. I prefer coffee because it gets to you faster, but that was quite nice. Awesome views here from the cafe overlooking the, the tea and the ocean. And a little spot of tea here. All right, not nearly, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not nearly as much driving today. So we still have 70%, 170 kilometers. Let's just see if our stats are like massively different or anything since I reset it today. Uh, 14.8, even better. Not bad. So there's a Cupra, which we had the chance to rent last year in France, but unfortunately didn't. They are very cool, and I hope we get them in the US. But over here, you may not see so much of the fire. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Be careful. Oh, look at that go. Right on fire, coming by the wind. Then you have to turn. Maybe mom, you have to turn it from there because of the wind. But okay. Look at that. It's gonna be one or two minutes and then. Okay, perfect. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> A little bit more EV spotting this morning. This is an Opal Maca. And then, oh, that's an Arcana. But I thought that the other ones were. EVs, but they're not. Okay. Here's a nice little fixer up. Just a little work required here. I got it going in no time. <laughs> Yikes. All right. Good morning again. We are here now at the port and we are going to be boarding this boat soon to go do some whale and dolphin watching. Maybe like some turtles, it says you can see too. And uh, two days ago, they saw two different types of whales and two different types of dolphins, and then false orcas, which I believe are like a type of dolphin or porpoise. So I hope we have similar luck today. It was raining a few minutes ago, but it's clearing out a little bit, and I think we have perfect whale watching weather. So we should be boarding this boat here soon from uh, Futurismo. here in the leaf oh, um, and we are uh, we just had a nice <laughs> afternoon nap and we are gonna go head out back to Sete Cidades do a little short walk around there uh, that we didn't get to the other day explore some more of the viewpoints do some fun driving and then go get dinner and we didn't even charge yesterday we we're living life dangerously we still have like 70% though that would be more than fine plus this is one of the closer locations on the island
all right, so I think change of plans here. We went to go do the hike and it was totally fogged in, so we decided we'd drive around a little bit. And the weather here kind of, if you wait just a few minutes, sometimes it completely changes. But uh, we have since driven to one of the viewpoints here and you can see it's actually just getting worse. For a minute it lifted and we saw the view down into the lake, but it's not looking too good. And so up here is the abandoned hotel that they really don't want you exploring. And it's actually been bought by another hotel group now, although it doesn't look like they're doing anything with it. And it's looked pretty cool on the inside. Lots of people have gone inside and done videos and stuff of it. It's not like it's actively guarded or anything, but don't want to take the kids in there. It doesn't seem totally safe. Like what we've seen, there's, you know, exposed like pipes and metal and all kinds of stuff. So we don't really want to uh, test out needing to get tetanus shots. Oh, here, here we go. You can sort of see the view. <laughs> This is the the two two lakes at Satisadad. There's the blue lake and the green lake. And the legend is that there was a princess and a shepherd that were in love and they were kept apart and they were so upset about it that the princess cried blue tears and the shepherd cried green tears into separate lakes and even now they're still separated. I also love that this is presented by Mobile Oil. <laughs> yeah. All right, we are here at the Green Lake now. Came down from the mountain and, oh my God, the ducks are all swarming because I think they think that we have food. And it's, uh, I guess I wouldn't say it's necessarily clearing off, but I think we're kind of below the fog all the way down here now. And here's the bridge that we saw from the top. And we're gonna go just take a little short walk right now while there's no rain and while the sun is sort of trying to come out. All right, so we're nestled here between the lakes. We have the Blue Lake, Lago Azul, and Green Lake, Lago Verde. And these are lakes that were formed, these are lakes that were formed during uh, volcanic eruptions that basically blew the top off of this volcanic peak and then created like a crater here and then over time the rainwater filled up the lakes here. And uh, much of this island is basically all just formed from volcanoes. So that's why they call this much like Hawaii of Europe because so much volcanic activity led to the formation of the stuff here and basically you find the traces of them everywhere. So this wasn't all that long ago, geologically speaking. They think that this was formed, uh, it, it, most of this was formed from like volcanic eruptions back around like 3,000 to 4,000 years ago. Or, uh, sorry, uh, 30,000 to 40,000 years ago. And then uh, there might have been even more recent eruptions as recently as like the 1400s. But now it's all largely uh, dormant, except you still have some of that activity geothermally, like with the hot springs.
right, one more design flaw here, and it's not unique to the leaf, actually, the rigging is the same problem. But when you lock the windows, you even the driver cannot control them. So when I put child locks on here, I can now not open and close that window. I can only open and close mine. Why? And I can lock me bit. The rev doesn't have that. Yeah, when you locked it, uh, maybe they fixed it now, but earlier when you locked uh, all of the windows from the screen, the uh, you still couldn't open them from... Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, but I think it shows that these cars are not designed by people that have kids. Daddy, what's a ranch? All right, well, we came down to Mosteros back near the beach and had a wonderful dinner at restaurant Ilhio, which you would kind of never know from the outside. It had this gorgeous back terrace patio right overlooking the water. We had some incredible food. And I don't know what's going on up here. It looks like, I don't know, there's just a ton of people in town here. So we're gonna head back to Ponte Delgada now. And I think we're gonna go through such a cigar sedads again. Oh, what's going on for? We're back after a big day driving around the whole island. We went up and down the peak of Sete Cidades twice to see if we could see the views and the sunsets. And we saw a little bit of sunset, but uh, still a little bit foggy up there. So that managed to use up a lot of the battery today. So we're down to 30%, 76 kilometers, and we are gonna get charged up again overnight. Let's see if at this low, we can still get a full charge overnight. My guess is yes. Yeah. Chargey, chargey. All right, sleep well, Leaf. We'll see you in the morning. Big hiking day tomorrow. What? All right, so I think that's gonna do it for the first part here. I'm gonna break this up into a few more. So. Uh, that'll all be coming your way soon. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of it. And come along with us for the next part. Hold Yes, just a second. Huh? Okay, we didn't charge at all, so that's this problematic. Hotel have... Huh.